How does uh, the, the level that you mix at affect um, the frequency response? Let's talk about Fletcher Munns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you? <laughs> Go after it. The natural loudness curves that uh, two guys came up with, Fletcher and Munson, I think. That, or else his name was Fletcher Munson. I think it was Munson Fletcher. Fletcher. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the louder you listen, yes. the more emphasis you hear on both low frequency and high frequency. Right? That's why it sounds better <laughs> loud, guys, because you, your ears work like that. It you sounds... Do you that, Chris? Do you have a Fletcher Munson curve? I don't. Do you have I, I don't have any. Um, no. There's, uh, if I may, I have a little bit... Uh, I think the whole Dolby standard of listening levels has addressed that. They find that, you know, around 75, 80 dB, the hearing is comfortable and it's loud enough, and you can have dynamics that goes up above that. But it is part of the Dolby philosophy is also that, you know, it should be when you set that level in the mixing room and in everywhere you hear it, it is a, you have the same perception of the low frequency and the high frequency in relationship to the mid frequencies wherever you go. And uh, so I think the, that part is also baked into the Dolby thing. And uh, I think that that type of listening level is probably where your hearing is, should we say, most accurate. <laughs> What's that, 85? Yeah, it's 75, 85 in, the, in that range. Well, Depending on how it keeps you working for, yeah. you know, well, without getting fatigued. I can talk a little bit real quick on that. That also depends on how big a room you're in and how close you are. And, you know, what we've discovered doing a bunch of stuff for, for Sony is that in the smaller rooms, and there's a lot of controversy out there, 78 dB, some people say, 80, 85. One thing that occurs, depending on what you're listening, if you have a speaker that is particularly harsh or has a lot of distortion, your brain's going to start to, sh or, or really inaccurate phase information, your brain will start to shut down and the louder you listen to that, you, they call it ear fatigue, but what it really is your brain saying, I don't want to try to figure this out anymore. Mm. And you keep turning it up and it keeps shutting you down, your ears can compress. So I would say, listen, 85 to me, and this is a, a real, we could open this discussion, we could be here till tomorrow, but I think 85 is like at the top of where I would mix on a long period of time. I'm, I crank it up sometimes to 100 just for a second, but I'm usually down in the 70s when I'm mixing. If I could add one thing to that, the, the, um, the Fletcher Munson curve, it, uh, w what they found out is that at low levels, let's say down around 50 or 60 or whatever, your ears actually have the opposite of a loudness contour curve. Right. They're dropping off in the low end, they're dropping off in the high end, and you're hearing things very mid-range. That's why they used to put a loudness button on receivers back in the 70s, it was when you're listening low at night and it's very soft, you're trying to not disturb the wife, it re restores the highs and the lows and puts that smiley curve on there, which theoretically flattens it back out. We just, have, we just have more sensitivity in the mid-range for lower levels. For lower it was, levels. It's survival. It was all about, you know, curing the thing that was coming to eat you when you were... So you don't want to listen super soft either to make your mixes. Yeah. If you make mixes really soft, <laughs> you'll make mistakes. Really big in the bottom and the exactly. top. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. You don't want to mix too loud or too soft. I just wanted to say a, a couple of things about the loudness things. Um, one, THD's hot plates have that same thing in them. As you turn them down, they naturally push the, the lows and the highs back up, just like mm -hmm. the loudness button. Um, the other thing, though, like you were just saying about mixing super low, there's some people that do that on purpose, and it's like it will result in a everything is the exact same volume mix. It'll sound like it's been mastered, squashed. Mm -hmm. As in you won't mix in dynamics because you can't hear anything quiet. Mm -hmm. Right. So you'll mix. Dynamically, you're exactly right. Cool and it's just a, you know. I think you'll also end up with hyped bottom and top, uh, you know, right. that's my experience. When I used to do this and, you know, would make a conscious effort to listen really soft all night because I was working with that kind of guy or whatever it was, you know, and then I listened to it the next game, holy cow, you know, that's now, what you get used to. Also. Now, I absolutely recommend listening really soft when you're cutting vocals or comping vocal tracks because your ears are much more sensitive to intonation. If you, if you comp a vocal nice and softly uh, and then do, do another one the next day, kind of loud and listen to the, the work you did, your, into, your intonation, a lot of times the clients won't hear, what are you talking about? She's flat there. Well, turn it down and play it for me again. They go, oh, you're right. It's yeah. really flat. If you guys, any of you guys are out playing live too, I, I do a bit of that and I'm always hammering the, the monitor mixer because he's just cranking. You know, I'm like, 
I can't hear anything. You got to turn turn it down. Those days of like super loud and making your ears bleed, it's not happening. For, it's bad for you. Uh, I was just gonna say that the loudness curve supposedly is because our ear is most people's ears like two inches long. Is that right or something? So it resonates. It's a pipe that resonates at three k. Three k when you turn it up when you mix, it's like wow, it sounds loud as hell. Mm-hmm. No, no, it's it's doctor. Here you go. Did you have a- I'm also, um, and I don't know if there's anything that backs this up, but I also noticed that in headphones, my pitch perception isn't as good. Right. Is there some reason it separates from Have ears? you ever noticed when you take off the headphones, how you, you get the sure. Doppler effect? Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. It's, you can't really be, uh, it's not like a certain reliable. Do, like your example of comping vocals. Don't, don't, doing don't try to tune a bass with headphones on. I think the reason that is, is well. you're, you've, you've concealed the air pressure. And, and your ear needs to, to move like, like a speaker. When you've cupped that in, there's going to be some deviation in, in the way that your, your eardrum actually... I think moves. vocalists sing more in tune. If you, if you can figure out a way to record with speakers... Well, that's exactly much what I, I've yeah. done it, but putting speakers out of phase... And you sing a lot more in tune, and, yep. Yeah. Put one off. You've seen it, even now they got headphones where it's only one. That allows your other mm-hmm. ear to... That's why I play in live. These guys like these in-ear things, and I can't really... I don't like them, but... Oh, it makes the sound man's job easier, right? It makes everybody... Feedback. Yeah. yeah. It, it makes a lot of things easier, but I haven't been able to uh, get used to them. Yeah. I'm just... So what's the, what's the question? 